Analysis of the Karkas Site, Iran's Massive Undermountain Centrifuge City The new uranium enrichment underground complex, located in the mountainous area south of Iran's main uranium enrichment site in Natanz, will feature halls more deeply buried than the Fordo uranium enrichment site, itself deeply buried. Given the size of the mountain, the new underground complex will also be much larger in floor space than the Iran Centrifuge Assembly Center, ICAC. An above-ground facility at the main Natan site destroyed in July 2020 by Israeli operatives in Iran and slated for replacement in the new underground facility, and will certainly contain several centrifuge halls for large-scale uranium enrichment with advanced centrifuges such as the IR-6 and possibly the even more advanced still under development. IR-9 machine with an enrichment capacity of 50 SWU per year. There will surely be room for at least a few thousand centrifuges in these halls, if not more, increasing Iran's enrichment capacity to unprecedented levels. The construction of the new underground complex began shortly after the destruction of the ICAC. This sad image shows an overview of the area, including the Natan's enrichment plant and the mountainous area south of it. As can be seen there are two western and two eastern massively hardened entrances to the undermountain facility. Commercial satellite imagery from September and October 2022 shows Iran completed the second western tunnel entrance, for a total of four tunnel entrances. With the fourth entrance completed, the external excavations appear to have ceased for now, but progress inside the tunnel is continuing. Two of the four portals feature tunnel entrance extensions. Images show the tunnel entrances and their extensions in October 2022, situated in a channel of excavated rock, allowing coverage with earth and providing significant additional protection to the tunnel portals. The Eastern Auxiliary Tunnel Entrance Extension is covered and has progressed since May, while the pre-existing Western Tunnel Entrance Extension appears largely unchanged. The Eastern Portals likely join before proceeding as one tunnel deep under the mountain, similar to the two sets of two tunnel entrances observed at Fordo. This practice may accelerate construction of a relatively long tunnel by providing additional operating space and ventilation. This eastern entrance may be better protected than Fordo's tunnel entrances, since it appears to be located under a small mountain peak. The size of the current staging area and probable future support site has grown in recent months, with additional buildings and foundations added as well as a recreational facility. This relatively large support area, itself occupying more space than the destroyed ICAC, may also indicate that larger-scale activities are planned for the underground facility. The depth of the underground facility can be estimated by comparing the heights of the mountain with the elevation at the tunnel entrances and by considering the possible incline of the tunnel entrance ramps to the main underground halls. If the tunnels were dug horizontally, the inner halls would be 78, or 145 meters below the height of the mountain. Therefore, the new site would be as or significantly more deeply buried than Fordo, reportedly 80 to 90 meters below its mountain peak. Another important consideration is the incline in the tunnels as they lead to the underground halls. In the case of Fordo, if the tunnels were dug horizontally, this would result in a depth of about 50 meters under the mountain peak. However, in 2011 to 2012, it was reported that the Fordo facility is about 80 to 90 meters underground. Of note, these depth reports circulated many years before a schematic of the Fordo underground facility became available through the Israeli robbery of the Iran nuclear archive in early 2018. The distance from the tunnel entrances to the approximate location of the main hall in Fordo covers about 300 meters. If the enrichment halls are indeed buried 80 to 90 meters under the peak, this would imply that the tunnels were not dug horizontally, but downward sloping, an implication confirmed by a senior official knowledgeable about the Fordo underground site. The grade of the ramps is not known. Moreover, are they straight or do they involve one or more switchbacks or helical turns as they progress toward the underground halls? Neither is indicated in the Fordo schematic, but both are possible. If the ramps do not continue all the way until the main hall, rather only half or two-thirds of the distance to the main hall, 
resulting in a net ramp length of 150 or 200 meters, respectively, they would need to have a slope or grade of 15 to 20 percent to allow the enrichment halls to be 80 meters under the mountain peak. In comparison, if the western and eastern tunnels at the Carcass site in Natans were dug horizontally as mentioned above, the inner halls would be 78, or 145 meters below the height of the mountain, respectively. If the two tunnels met at a height in between, the halls would be about 110 meters deep. At a downward slope of 10 to 15 percent, the higher situated tunnel could gain an additional depth of 10 to 15 meters for each distance of 100 meters towards the peak of the mountain. It would require about 220 to 335 meters in downward sloping for the higher situated tunnel and 220 to 335 meters in upward sloping for the lower situated tunnel to meet at a common elevation. The distance from each tunnel entrance to the mountain peak is about 400 meters for both the eastern portals and the western portal. If Iran conducted more complicated tunnel engineering, hall depths greater than 110 meters are achievable, even depths greater than 145 meters, if the eastern tunnel sloped downward. There is little available information about the layout of the Karkas complex and the discussion of the tunnel's incline adds further uncertainty to any discussion of the underground hall's layout. Are the halls on one level or multiple levels, reflecting the differing heights of the portals? How many square meters will the halls occupy? Iran's nuclear program has successfully built tunnel facilities in the past, with the help of experienced military construction companies. Two prominent tunnel facilities are the Fordo Enrichment Site and the closed Shahid Borajerdi facility, a key mad plan project to make weapon-grade cores of nuclear weapons. Information about these facilities' internal structures is available from the Iran Nuclear Archive. This figure shows the tunnel design of Shahid Borajerdi along with an image of its construction, and this one shows the design schematic of the Fordo Tunnel Complex. For further comparison, a missile tunnel shows the inside of a large underground ballistic missile hull, using images released publicly by Iran. The location and elevation of the portals suggest more complicated underground structures than at Shahid Borajerdi or Fordo. Moreover, the construction appears to be slower than that of Shahid Borajerdi, where tunneling took about a year, possibly implying a more complex design. Karka's site may be a series of long tunnels like Iran's missile cities, with multiple large halls running in parallel and perpendicular with the addition of side chambers, as in Shahid Borajerdi. It is likely that the internal interconnected complex structure of the Karkas site is a combination of the designs of deeply buried sites of Fordo and Shahid Borajerdi to be able to conduct a series of different nuclear-related activities from enrichment to balancing of centrifuge machines and even converting enriched uranium to uranium metal necessary for making core of nuclear weapons. With the mountain ridge having an effective width of over 500 meters and a length of 700 meters, tunnels and side chambers of varying widths of up to 25 meters or more and several large halls are absolutely possible to enable Iran to carry out key nuclear activities mentioned. It is highly likely that Iran's military has been deeply involved in designing and constructing this strategic site. In summary, after several attacks by Israeli agents on Iran's key nuclear facilities, it is increasing the number of its nuclear sites and moving related nuclear activities to unprecedented depths to protect its hard-won infrastructures from various types of attacks and to keep open the option for an extreme dive to build up a small nuclear arsenal in a short period of only one to four weeks. The time for a deep dive will undoubtedly come. Thanks for watching and see you next time.